Fun Facts presents the 1952 Nash Healey Roadster. It is a 50s classic car. It was introduced in 1951 and had a production through 1954. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So let's get started now. Okay, we're doing the Nash Healey Roadster. And back in 1951, the Nash introduced America's first post-war sports car. The stylish little car was the result of an unlikely and chance meeting of two men at the polar opposite ends of the automotive industry. While aboard the England-bound Queen Elizabeth, the rather conservative Nash Kelvinator president, George W. Mason, and British sports car builder Don Healy met and found that they got along quite well. Healy was fresh from an unsuccessful meeting with GM where he was attempting to procure a run of the Cadillac V8 engines to drop into the Healy Silverstone sports car. Now that would have been amazing. Wow. Cadillac wanted none of it. Whoa. George Mason wanted a hollow car to lift the somewhat st stodgy Nash lineup. So a deal was made to supply modified Nash Ambassador six-cylinder engines, transmissions, and axles to the Donald Healey Motor Company in England. And the Nash Healey was born. Early cars featured an alloy body designed by Healey and built by Panel Craft in England. Cars were assembled at Healey and shipped back to the USA. The first Nash Healey was a lovely little car with brisk performance, but for 1952, it was restyled to incorporate a more cohesive look with the rest of the Nash lineup. So yet another unlikely partner was brought in. Pinfarina of Italy was contracted to handle the design and the construction of the new bodies. Now drivetrains were sent from Nash in the USA to Healy in England where they were matted to the modified Silverstone chassis, then sent off to Italy for body fitment and final assembly before being sent back across the pond to their home market. As one would expect, this was a very expensive endeavor and the 1950 Nash Healy cost $5,908 compared to the Corvette's $3,513. So Healy soon moved on to focus his efforts on the homegrown Austin Healy and sales of the Nash sagged. Despite the addition of the attractive coupe to the lineup, the Nash Healey did not survive past 1955. When the last few leftover 54s were sold off, only 507 were built in total, including the 90 Le Mans coupes. The Nash Healey is a two-seat luxury sports car or Gran Tercimo, produced between 1951 and 1954 and marketed by the automaker Nash Kelvinator as a hollow vehicle to promote sales of the other Nash models in North America. A matting of the upscale Nash Ambassador drivetrain and a handmade European chassis and body it was the first sports car introduced in the U.S. by a major automaker since the Great Depression. It was the product of the partnership between Nash and Kelvinator and the British automaker Donald Healey. Only a year after introduction, the car received some styling tweaks by Pin Farina and the sub-assembly began in Italy. A racing version built with a Spartan aluminum body finished third in the 1952 Le Mans 24-hour race. 
Donald Healy and Nash Calvinator, CEO George W. Mason, met on the RMS Queen Elizabeth, an ocean liner going from the United States to Great Britain. Healy was returning to England after a failed attempt to purchase engines from General Motors Luxury Cadillac Division. His objective was to expand production of the Healy Silverstone that race car driver Briggs Cunningham had customized with Cadillac's new 1949 overhead valve V8 engine. Mason and Healy met over dinner and a production plan ensued during the remainder of the voyage. The two became friends because they were both interested in photography. Mason had a stereo 3D camera that he intrigued Healy, and the 1951 Nash Healy was the first post-war sports car from a major American automaker two years ahead of the Chevrolet Corvette. The custom-built Curtis Craft, which predated it never reached production car status, with only 18 units being built. A prototype was exhibited at the Paris Motor Show in September of 1950. The production, the model debuted at the February 1951 Chicago, Chicago Auto Show, followed that month by the Miami Auto Show, also classified as a grand tour for its luxury appointments and extreme price, the car served its purpose and was campaigned in several racing circuits. Nash Motors supplied the Don Healy Motor Company with the powertrain components and the Ambassador inline six cylinder, 234 cubic inch, 3.85 liter engine, and a three speed manual transmission with Borg Warner overdrive plus the torque tube and differential, Healy fitted a lighter, higher compression aluminum cylinder head in place of the cast iron stock item. SU carburetors that were popular on British sports cars at the time, this increased the power from the stock 112 horsepower to a version to be 125 horsepower. Don Healy's original plan was to use the heavier 331 cubic inch 5.4 liter Cadillac V8 engine and the car was designed with an engine bay that would allow a few later owners to convert their cars to the V8 power. Wow, I, that really is impressive. The chassis was widened and reinforced Healy Silverstone box section ladder type steel frame, independent front suspension, also, Healy Silverstone was by, was by coil springs, a trailing link, and a sway bar, and the rear suspension featured Nash's rear end and coil springs replaced the Silverstone's leaf springs, while the beam axle was located by pan hard rod. Healy designed the aluminum body, but it was outsourced and panel craft sheet metal of Birmingham fabricated the body. It incorporated the Nash grille, the bumpers, and other trim. Healy was responsible for the car's final assembly. The Pan Americana Pace Car. A Nash Healy served as the course car for the 1951 Carrera Pan Americana described as one of the most dangerous automobile races of any type in the world. Driven by Chuck Stevenson, the Nash Healy ran ahead of the racers to ensure the way was clear on the world's greatest road race. And to credit, excuse me, to create a racing pedigree for the marquee Donald Healy built four lightweight Nash Healy's for the endurance racing. Like the road cars, they had Nash Ambassador engines and drive lines. However, fitting higher compression aluminum sil cylinder heads, special manifolds, and a twin SU carburetors increased their power to 200 horsepower. There were three open versions that were built and one coupe. These cars 
competed in four consecutive Le Mans races and won Mili Migla. Okay, well I think at this point we're just going to slow the video down and say thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I will have a link from the two articles that I was reading below into the description that you can read all about the Nash Healy from um, uh, Wikipedia. And we'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to view our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we're going to be doing all the sports cars from the 1950s and 60s. We'll be doing the muscle cars and we'll be doing the hybrid cars and the super cars. We'll be doing autoramas. We'll be doing custom cars and hot rods. So a little bit of everything for everybody. And again, thank you. We hope to see you when we upload our next video. And always, 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 take good care. Hope to see you.